Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Few aerospace companies are more important to the history of flight than Boeing. Founded in 1916, Boeing has been at the forefront of military and commercial aircraft design and manufacturing nearly since the advent of aviation. Though the company began producing military aircraft during World War I, it soon entered the commercial market, creating such iconic models as the 707, 747, 777, and 787 Dreamliner. From design to deployment and beyond, Boeing has a reputation for excellence that includes some of the strictest testing methods in the industry. The 747 was the first plane to live up to the term jumbo jet truly. First introduced in 1970, more than 1,500 of these planes were eventually produced. The last one was assembled in December of 2022 for Atlas Air. Over the years, Boeing has significantly streamlined its production process, allowing it to produce a 747 in just over a month. Boeing's modular construction process, combined with highly accurate machine lifts and cranes, has drastically improved the quality of the final product. The build-out starts with the construction of the fuselage sections, which are fused together after each part of the plane is complete. The wings, tail, and engines are then added to the plane, most of them being constructed in a separate facility or part of the factory. Finally, the undercoating will be covered in a fresh coat of paint in the client's specified colors. Boeing's fleet of 747 freighters necessitate a stronger floor, a cargo bay door, and other features not seen in the passenger planes. The first time that a new Boeing plane moves under its power is during what's known as a taxi test. This is a significant milestone in any plane's life cycle, but it is crucial when the aircraft is a prototype or the first of its kind. Though the plane will not take off or even gain any significant speed during the taxi test, it is essential to the overall proof of concept. Whether Boeing is testing a drone, commercial plane, or military plane, it is imperative that it spend sufficient time moving on the ground before it is subjected to more stressful tests. Once the rudimentary testing is out of the way, Boeing will put its planes through a variety of exercises designed to test its limitations. One of the most important examples is known as the tail strike test. 
The term tail strike refers to any time the rear end of an aircraft makes contact with a runway or other surface. This can occur during takeoff and landing and can cause significant damage to the fuselage and the back of the plane. During a tail strike exercise, the aircraft will be loaded with ballast. The pilot will then raise the plane's nose without taking off, forcing the tail to hit the tarmac. A secondary test that uses similar maneuvers is known as the Minimum Velocity on Stick Test, or MVU. This determines the minimum speed required for the plane to take off safely. During this process, the tail will again drag against the runway so it must be fitted with a special anti-friction device. Though risky, the resulting data can prove invaluable if the plane were to suffer an engine outage or some other incident while attempting to become airborne. One of the most extreme tests a new Boeing plane will face is rejected takeoff. This is meant to simulate what might happen if a plane traveled several hundred miles per hour down the runway and was forced to slam on the brakes just before taking off. The test aims to determine the aircraft's ability to come to a safe stop under various conditions. For this reason, RTO tests are often done with different takeoff weights runway conditions, and environmental factors like wind and temperature. In the case of the 747-8, Boeing wanted to see how well the plane could stop if it were loaded to maximum capacity and equipped with brakes wholly worn down. To the engineer's surprise, the fully loaded plane came to a stop more than 700 feet earlier than predicted. Unfortunately, the heat from the brakes and wheels reached extremely high levels, causing them to catch fire. Fortunately, each tire is fitted with special plugs that allow them to deflate before it can explode automatically. And when it came to testing the new 787-9 Dreamliner, Boeing took things to the next level. In July 2014, the Dreamliner was forced to take off with significantly reduced engine thrust a process known as engine out testing or abused takeoff testing. Though such an occurrence is rare, it's essential that the Boeing engineers know that their plane can stay airborne, land, and even take off again, regardless of whether or not both engines are functioning as expected. Another component of this testing is known as VMCG, which stands for Velocity for Minimum Control on the Ground. This is typically performed on a very wide runway, as one of the engines will be completely turned off at over 100 miles per hour. This causes the plane to list to one side, forcing the pilot to compensate with the rudder to keep the plane moving in a straight line. While takeoff tests are among the most important, 
Boeing's engineers know that a lot can go wrong during landing. For instance, it's not uncommon for planes to encounter what are known as crosswinds. This is when the wind blows perpendicular to the direction of the runway, creating a sideways force on the aircraft. Depending on how strong they are, crosswinds can easily push a plane off course or cause it to land at an odd angle. The solution is known as the crabbing technique. This is when the pilot approaches the landing with the nose pointed slightly off-center. Just before the touchdown, the pilot realigns the plane and completes the landing. After testing, the final aircraft will be delivered to the customer. In the case of the final Boeing 747, the buyer was Atlantis Airlines in New York. Thanks to strenuous testing and Boeing's reputation for excellence, these airlines can be confident that they're getting a plane capable of performing to their expectations in any situation. The 787 Dreamliner was first introduced in 2011, though Boeing has been redesigning the new wide-body jet airliner for years. Whenever Boeing introduces a new aircraft design, the prototype model will be subjected to a battery of static tests ranging from simple physical evaluations to tests intended to push the plane well past its intended limits. To test the newly completed plane's airframe, the Dreamliner was put into a special unit designed for fatigue testing. This is used to evaluate the durability and strength of materials under cyclic loading conditions. Fatigue testing aims to determine how a plane's various components will react when subjected to the same types of pressures it would experience during its life cycle, but all at once. In fact, the hydraulically powered unit can perfectly simulate the stress of 100,000 flights over three years, all while capturing vast amounts of data As technology continues to improve, robots are seeing increasing use in aircraft testing. One of the most innovative static tests in Boeing's arsenal is known as the Wing Spar Test. This is performed long before the final plane is assembled and involves subjecting the spar, or backbone of the wing, to non-destructive testing. Specialized robotic apertures will move across the spar surface while using water to conduct ultrasonic sound waves. This allows the robots to determine if there are any invisible cracks, weaknesses, or other flaws before the spar is installed in the wing. Even smaller companies now use X-ray equipped robots to scan a plane's fuselage for potential defects. In time, it may be possible to produce aircraft that are so well designed and structurally sound that they can fly further, longer, and faster, all while costing less to operate.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.